Hi, everyone. We are so excited to share with you about Pallas Athena and the uh, remarkable things that are going to be happening with her. I'm Kaylin Castell. I am so excited to share um, this exploration of Pallas Athena with you, um, having been doing this with Morgan Markwell now probably a couple of years or at least a year and a half. We've been really diving deep into this understanding and it's been blowing our minds in a good way hmm. because mm -hmm. you know, palace is all about the mental intellectual realms she's a warrior goddess she's amazing so i'm just gonna let morgan uh introduce herself for a moment and she is um one of my priestess sisters we are we've been in uh we're in a con connected in the same lineage we've known each other for a while through the work that we do so Morgan, take it away. Thank you. Um, I am Morgan and um, I'm a high priestess through the Nicole Christine lineage. Um, I've been studying astrology for several years through um, the Shamanic Astrology Mystery School. And Kaylin has been one of my uh, mentors and teachers. So I've been really grateful for everything that I've learned from her and now get to explore with her. Um, I'm also a psychic and um, and so we've just had the best time learning about Pallas Athena and exploring what she has to offer at the turning of the ages. Um, and um, it's just been um, really eye opening to um, explore, uh, you know, her her all the possibilities that she has to offer us now. So I just want to say that I appreciate you, Morgan, because <laughs> I probably wouldn't have taken this deep of a dive, even though my own personal Pallas Athena has a lot to say and has had a lot to say to me in my life. And I can see that now looking back. So I might share that uh, more at another time. But uh, so just to start out to kind of give you a sense of Pallas Athena, she uh, is was birthed out of the head of Zeus. So the story starts with um, a prophecy that said that Metis, the this goddess that Zeus was having an affair with, was <laughs> going to birth two children. One might be, or both might be more powerful than he was. Now being a patriarchal God, and this was kind of at the start of the patriarchy, he did not want any competition. He did not want to have children that were gonna be more powerful than him. So he decided to, eat or swallow met metis not knowing she was already pregnant and that this child that was within her now is within zeus so he's so he's growing the child within him and then uh he's having this terrible headache and chiron comes along and helps open up his head and out comes uh Pallas athena fully armored and ready to go so it's an interesting uh, way of like, well, how is this? So we, we think about the patriarchal culture and women not being seen as powerful or smart. They mm -hmm. were they were considered only to have value if they could have babies. <laughs> but here we have this goddess who's not that. And so she's really cluing us into something and she's helping us to understand that perhaps there's way more to the story of feminine wisdom than we have been really tuned into. I think it's, there's more and more of it I'm seeing all over the place and books being written about feminine wisdom, all kinds mm -hmm. of um, people talking about it, teaching classes about it, that kind of thing. But it's really, if we want to take it back to its origins, it's connected to Pallas Athena. Mm -hmm. So you can fill in the parts of the story I missed. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's that's a really good point. I think it also really speaks to um, like when she came out of Zeus's head, she was um, like fully grown and she was in full armor. Um, so like ready to fight, um, which I think, you know, really speaks to, um, you know, how are we trying to protect ourselves from um, getting into our hearts, um, getting into um, our dharma and um, and getting into our authentic selves um this is something that's like really intrigued me actually um when i do my own work um which you know we can talk about more but um you know i think there's so many um great 
uh, symbolism, like so much great symbolism and uh, so many great points that we can really look at just through the birth story of Pallas Athena. Um, it goes into like the inner dynamics between like father and daughter, um, about, you know, warfare, about wisdom, about um, control and power um, and, you know, what the true nature of empowerment really is um, and, and the balance between men and women. Um, and those are just, I mean, that's just to start. So um, there's just a wealth of knowledge, um, a wealth of wisdom, um, like so much karma that can be cleared when we look at the myths of uh, Pallas Athena and Zeus, um, you know, at, you know, as a as a duo. But um, uh, you know, when it, what really intrigued me and brought me into this great interest in Pallas Athena was looking at the alignment of 2020 um, and um, the whole um, stellium that was in Capricorn. Um, so yeah, maybe we could look at that right now. Yeah, bringing it up. And of course, oh, <laughs> well, let's just start with the USA natal chart because I can show this and then not have to come back to it. Sure. Uh, that is the fact that Pallas Athena is conjunct the US moon. And there are things going on with all of this later that we'll, um, we'll be sharing a little bit more about. But just so you know, that Pallas Athena has been a very big part of the US chart. She was very big part of the forming of this country. Mm -hmm. Anything more you want to say about that before I shift it? No. Yeah. I think, I think that's, you know, she, she helps create the country. It, it would appear. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I would have totally agree with you on that. So, uh huh. <laughs> it's funny to me too, that the U S constitution, when it was created, the Iroquois said you need to have access or create a way of getting approval from the grandmothers before you do anything like go to war, war, mm -hmm. mind you war. And, uh, and if you don't do that, you're going to get in trouble. And of course they didn't include that in the constitution. And so of course we're in trouble. So hmm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So here's the 2020 chart. Uh, and you can see Pallas Athena at 2249 Capricorn, Jupiter at 2249, exactly conjunct on November 12th of 2020. Uh, Morgan can share a little bit more with us about all of the conjunctions that happened. But here's Pluto at 2251, just two minutes away, like mm -hmm. super close. And then Saturn at 2655. So there's this huge alignment. And we'll see how this is also still playing out now. But Anyway, take it away. Morgan. So this is only the final of three conjunctions. Um, so the first one was on April 1st, 2020. The second was on uh, June 30th, 2020. And this is the third on November 12th, 2020, because all three um, of, sorry, um, Pallas Athena, Jupiter and Pluto all went up together and then retrograded back together um and then and then went direct all together again so um you know we were all looking at jupiter and and pluto and saturn doing this dance but i think a lot a lot of people might have missed that um Pallas Athena was right in there with him and this is to me like such a cool thing because uh, mythologically Pallas Athena was the only woman invited into um, the the room with the men uh, in ancient Greece because uh, she was notably uh, a very intelligent woman and they like wanted her wisdom so uh, she was always included um, and so again here she's included um, with these you know top dogs um, in whatever they're planning for the the coming new age and so um, this really um, got me excited about Pallas Athena. It's so amazing. And to think about how, uh, you know, the it's so rare for Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn to come together, like, you know, in Capricorn, for mm -hmm. one thing, and Capricorn being also connected to the circle of grandmothers and, and wisdom and things that we might associate with Pallas Athena, um, having the wisdom to know how to move this forward in the best ways possible, the most effective and efficient ways possible. And the thing is, is that we were looking at 2020 
we knew this Jupiter Pluto Saturn thing was happening, but we weren't sure what it was going to bring. And uh, so if we were doing this video before looking at this and going, hmm, what's this going to mean? <laughs> well, we could have, we could speculate about that, but now we're at about a couple of years, almost three years past it. And we can look back and go, oh, that's what this was all about. And what, what's this great reset that we're going through um, and that was seeded at that time. So it's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing that is going on that we want to just take a look at here is um, what's going on currently. Do you want to speak into yeah. that? Yeah, sure. So, um, so Pallas Athena had uh, her overstory in, um, in Capricorn and currently her overstory is uh, in Pisces and this is about to come to an end because she's gone all the way up to 26 Cancer and on December 1st she's going to go direct um, sorry retrograde she's stationing retrograde and that stationing retrograde happens to be exactly opposite Pluto so it's kind of like a full moon um, version of Pallas and Pluto that was seeded in 2020 um and so she's going to retrograde in cancer and her next cycle is going to be um in the overstory of cancer which um you know actually archetypally is not a place of uh you know a, a place of comfort for her so she's probably going to exploring be exploring all new ways of um how to do cancer um as a goddess and um and so this this retrograde point where she she gets to be in a full Pluto um, phase um, is is pretty. I mean, I think that's a pretty big deal because it sets up the entire next cycle um, to be um, like an underworld type cycle um, where, you know, she can gain her empowerment. And, um, you know, I, I kind of saw that uh, 2020 alignment as her um like one of her um medicines one of her superpowers is alchemy and so she was kind of like in in this um like seeding of alchemy with pluto with jupiter with saturn and now she's at that full moon stage of her alchemy and so you know what is going to happen right now um it's it's really exciting to watch and and to to have it unfold and we can imagine that that the seed point with pluto and now opposite pluto it's it's like what needs to die what mm -hmm. is what are we done with what what is palace as representative of the divine feminine wisdom and also willing to stand for a cause she believes in <laughs> we could imagine that too she's a warrior a, a wisdom warrior ideally so that that her causes will be wisely chosen not just something that she just goes out willy-nilly to you know create uh like let me just go into this war this battle or do this thing or whatever that's about that she she's going to take the time to think about it and have um, make it a cause that she really believes in and perhaps it's going to be the earth uh, maybe mm -hmm. there's going to be, you know, I think there are more and more people who are starting to look at the, you know, what's happening to the earth and we need to do something different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we need to have the wisdom to know what actions to take and do those that were, that will create a different experience and, um, and die to all the old ways that are not working and are not helping. So that's what it feels like, um, perhaps as part of what this is all about. And uh, and this is happening also, interestingly, as Venus is coming out of the underworld in her Capricorn cycle. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Wait, whoa, Pallas Athena is going to be uh, sort of connecting in as she goes through this journey to with the Capricorn Venus meta goddess on the world stage. The, the grandmothers, the wise ones, the elders, the ones that really know how to do make the best choices for the best results. Oh, so good. <laughs> it's so good. And I mean, if you even look at this chart here, she is right about to come out of the underworld. Um, she's almost exactly 10 degrees from the sun and she's in opposition within a day of, um, of Mars retrograde. Yes. 
which is another example of you know the the polarized masculine and feminine so it's just like a beautiful alignment yeah and later this day she actually does get 10 degrees from the sun yeah uh, it, that's a big day <laughs> so might not see her rise on december 1st unless you have a super ho low horizon line and you might see her from um from the sun but probably you won't see her for a few more days after that but technically she's out of the under she's coming out of the underworld uh time and and if we think of Pallas Athena opposite Pluto, Pluto representing the underworld where we become <laughs> empowered. Pluto's job is always to bring empowerment. But first mm -hmm. we have to face our deepest fears. We have, um, we have to release and let go of everything that's in the way of our empowerment. And that's not always easy. That's often difficult. It's often- It's, it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that's what's being- uh, set up here now at this time. Just wanted everyone to know that. And meanwhile, set, um, Pluto will come and conjunct the USA chart, United States chart, mm -hmm. one more time, December twenty seventh, um, as it's as it's getting ready to complete its um, exact Pluto return. It'll still yeah. be in the energy of it next year, as um, Pallas Athena is going through her Capricorn cycle pretty cool <laughs> it's amazing it's amazing so yeah we've got a lot to look forward to and explore and actually one of the things i love about palace athena athena is she is the creator of thought forms and you know she uses her imagination to create realities to create worlds and um and so we can actually tap in and co-create with her absolutely i mean this is such a remarkable time so for those of you listening to this, we will be doing additional videos on Pallas Athena. Uh, we have some remarkable stories we can share personally and collectively uh, around this. So stay tuned. And also just uh, encouraging everyone to think about what is it that you need to die to? What is it that you can release? What is it you can let go of that may be in the way of you standing in the greater strength and power of who you are? also in the intelligence of who you are, because a lot of times I know this has been true for me. And I imagine maybe for you too, Morgan, mm -hmm. is that, uh, when I grew up, I felt like I was dumb. My mm -hmm. parents were like Mensa smart, <laughs> super smart. And I, um, I had a lot of challenges, uh, in school because I was highly sensitive and had mean teachers. And so I, I didn't get a good start on that. I never thought I was smart. And as I've gotten older and people tell me how smart I am, I'm starting to think I probably should believe them. <laughs> yeah, I would say. <laughs> but yes, you know, that additional, that uh, an original programming conditioning and everything, it's not easy to get through. So it's really not. It's not yeah. easy to get through. So our, so what is it within you that is that you can let go of? And I'm doing my best to let go of this one because it's uh it's disrupted my life in a lot of ways at different times mm -hmm. so there's maybe something i don't know if you have one that you could uh recommend to people or that you're working on to let go of yourself yeah um so uh one of the things that i've been working with uh palace athena about is um uh just um things about my immune system um and you know the whole i mean it, it kind of is rooted in the concept of um um, as within, so without. And so, um, you know, my immune system is having some specific challenges that are are pretty big. Um, and, um, and so, uh, working with her to, um, try to, to quiet the immune system, uh, to quiet the inner warfare that, um, it feels like is going on and, um, to come to, um, a place of inner equality and inner harmony, um, and, uh, how Pallas Athena can, um, get a healing from that. And then we can, um, uh, clear certain karmas and we can rebuild and we can move forward, um, with clarity, um, which would feel like, um, more of a, um, uh, a way to, to create something on the foundations of, uh, non-hierarchy. Oh, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. And I love that inner warfare imagery. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes it's just our thoughts, like, 
you know, ha having an inner warfare, but sometimes maybe it's our immune system or other parts of us that are having a, an inner warfare. So becoming more aware of that and working with that, as you said, and clearing that away and, and hopefully, uh, you know, I think once we get over inner warfare within ourselves, we will mm -hmm. get over having warfare externally in our reality. How good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's the idea. So <laughs> hopefully we can work that out. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, um, Morgan, for doing this with me. And I think uh, hopefully everybody's gotten something out of this in terms of how they want to work with this energy and hope and hopefully we'll see you down the road. Thank you, Kaylin.